the living the word of God. It's just, uh, you know, I, I, I believe it's just hope is what we come to deliver. Amen. Because, um, you know, my wife is probably going to be the one. I just want to open it up. Amen. In prayer. And uh, ask the Holy Spirit to help us tonight. Amen. And uh, let's just bow our heads for a moment and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus. The Father, I don't know where 19 years went, Father, but they went in a snap of a finger, Lord. Because just yesterday, Father, I was wanting to take my life, Lord, because I did not have a purpose in life, Father. But I thank you, Lord, that, Father, you, Father, came out, Father God. From, Father, your comfort zone, Lord, it came down to reach, Father, a couple, Lord, that you can see far ahead, Father, that you can accomplish at least a little something through them, Father. I thank you for that, Father. I pray that, Father, that you somehow, some way, give hope, Lord, to those, Father, that are here tonight. And maybe they know somebody that needs hope, Lord. That I pray that this testimony, this message, whatever you want to call it, Lord, can help these people, Lord. I believe it will, Father. We pray by faith and we believe it will. In the name of your son, Jesus, we all say amen and amen. Praise God. Let's give, give glory to God. Amen. You know, uh, you know, I was talking to my wife about this. You know what we were going to talk about? And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, we go back many years, many, many years, you know, what 19 years went like a snap of a finger, you know, real snap of a finger. And I want to thank God for the women you know, that prayed and fasted for me because, you know, my wife came here for a year before I came. I was a lost cause. Folks, I was a lost cause. I mean, I was lost. There was just like, you know, that's, I believe that God delights in, you know, uh, saving people like myself. You know, because I came from a, a life, you know, my father, murder, you know, I mean, my brother, a murder. I came from drunkards, liars, thieves. I mean, this is my lineage, my lineage, you know, and that's, 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 you know, that's all I was taught to do. You know, so uh, the person that really can, can speak more about it is my wife, because, you know, I was, she, you know, probably, I, in fact, I know she didn't lose hope, but I was lost. You know, she should have lost hope. You know, but I'll tell you what she's going to uh, say tonight, amen, I believe will touch your hearts, you know, to not give up. Don't give up. If somebody can get saved, you know, like myself, through the prayer of the women, I believe, you know, I mentioned these women. My wife can't remember, but I said, man, what women were there back then that fasted for me? Because they started a chain of fast for yes. me, and I didn't know it. I didn't know it, you know, but I remember my sister Sylvia, I remember my wife, I remember sister Betty, and I remember Patricia Ariano. I don't know if there was any other women. Pastor Melissa, of course, well, she's the one that took the initiative to come to my house after I kicked her out of my house, you know? I mean, that's, could you believe that? I kicked Pastor Melissa out of my house. I said, get out of my house! You know, I kicked her up, but she wouldn't go. I thought she left, and when I looked out the window there, she's still standing, going, what is she doing still here? Didn't I just tell her to leave? You know, but she wouldn't go. Thank God for that. But I'm going to I'm going to let my wife speak a little bit. And, you know, and then we'll be just we'll move as the Holy Spirit carries us. Amen. Amen. OK, um, like he was talking and saying that we're going to talk about how to save your marriage when there's no hope. You know, um, like he was saying, I'm, I mean, I've been here for 19 years. I believe it's 19 years. And um, you know what? Um, I can honestly say that, you know, my marriage was. I don't even know that was not, it was not a marriage, you know, because I was reading here, you know, um, you know, a marriage is a union of two people as partners in a personal relationship. I didn't have that with him. You know, we were, you know, we were living in the same house, but we were separated. Like, you know, you do your own thing, I do my own thing. I would go to my kids' games, I would just grab my kids, but, but you know what? I knew that um, God was involved in all this. I kept going to church. You know, I believe, you know, um, I know Pastor Melissa and my sister-in-law, there was a few women that were with me, and you know what, I never gave up. Yeah, there was times that I said, you know, forget it, I'm not going to continue going, but you know what, I, what kept me going was thinking, and saying, you know what, there's a purpose in my life, there's a purpose for my children and my and my husband, and, and you know what, I, I understood that, you know, don't give up regardless. I don't know what situation you're in. I don't know, um, like we're talking about marriages right now. Um, I don't know where you're at with your spouse. I don't know, but you know what? God can do, if he did that for us, he can do it for you. You just have to surrender yourself and, and allow God to work in your life, you know? And it, um, and you know what, with him, it was just, he was very, I mean, it was very tough. It wasn't easy, you know, like, you know, his character was very strong, and it's 
still is, but just for good now. <laughs> for good now, you know. <laughs> but you know what? I I kept going. I never gave up. I um, he was always there with me. But like I said, we were not a couple. We were not, you know, like you know. Now I can say he's my partner. He's my best friend. Before he was just my friend. He was just. He's not my best friend. But you know what? God restored me. God um put my marriage together, he, you know, he healed me because I was really, um, how can I say, I was verbally abused, you know, but um, I thank God that, you know, I said I wasn't going to cry, but, <laughs> but I thank God that, you know, just to thank I was, you know, man, I just, the reason I'm just so thankful and I thank God that, you know, I can go back and I look at all those things and what I went through. But you know what? I know that all of that was something that I was able to, I'm able to teach others and say, you know what? If God did that for me, he can transform your husband. He can change your husband. There's nothing too big for the Lord, you know? And um, I have all my notes here, but I'm on the work. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You know, uh, there was times that, yeah, I decided to quit. And there was times that, you know what, forget it. I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to, you know. But you know what, I kept going, even though I was there, but I wasn't there. You know, but the Lord just moved in my marriage. You know, he changed me. He healed me. He restored my marriage. Um, you know, and I thank God for that because, you know, if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for me not giving up, you know, not losing hope, you know, regardless what situation you're in, do not lose hope, do not quit, keep going, keep fighting. If you really love your spouse and you really care for your children, that was one thing that kept me. I said, no, no, I'm going to stick it out. And regardless, whatever it takes, I'm going to stick it out. You know, maybe it was for the right or the wrong reason. I don't know, but I stuck it out. I said, no, I'm going to stick it out for my children. My children, you know, I, I, actually it was um, David that came with me. He was coming with me. And I said, no, no, I'm not going to, you know, settle for that. I'm just going to keep pursuing God and knowing that God's in control. God's going to change him. And, you know, what was it? Almost two years later, a year later, he came. But... You know what? Was it easy? No, of course it wasn't easy. But you know what? I thank God that, you know, what God has done in my marriage, in my husband, and my home, I thank God for that. I thank Him so much. And I just look back and I said, Lord, you are so good to us. And, you know, and then I, I was reading right here where it says Mark 11, 24. It says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it and it will be yours. You know, believe right. that and trust the Lord. Don't just, you know, go on in life and not, you know, just know that God is with you. Know that there's nothing impossible for God. With God, all things are possible. And he can restore whatever it may be. I don't know where you guys are at. I don't know where your marriage is at. But you knowing that the Lord will help you through and the Lord can change you and the Lord can change your situation. And keep pursuing God and knowing that there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. Don't give up. Don't give up. You know, once you give up, what what are you going to do? Are you going to go back or are you going to go forward? Might as well s stick it out and know that you have a purpose in life. Amen. No, 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 no. Praise God. Well, praise God. Now. Amen. I'm glad you didn't give up. Really, because with all due respect, I should have lost my marriage. Really, I should have. I should have been single. And I probably should have been dead, really. I got to go back, way back, even before, you know, I mean, we've been, we're going on 32 marriages, I mean, 32, 32 years, <laughs> 32 years in our, in our marriage this year by, by the grace of God. But you know, it wasn't easy, folks. It wasn't easy at all. It had to take a hard work between both of us, you know. I had to change and I had to allow God to change me, you know. She didn't know a lot of the times what God was doing in my life. You know, because you never know the deep things that God has to work in your own heart. Remember, I come from a man, uh, I mean, a lifestyle. My father was a murderer. My brother was a murderer. And I used to drive in my car. I would have a baseball bat. And I would say, you know, and I had road rage. That was when road rage was just coming around. I had that kind of anger. You know, and I would say, you know what? My, one time my little kids, you know, Manuel and, and David said, Dad, what if a guy like Hulk Hogan comes out and 
and, and, you know, and you confront him. And I said, you know what, son? He's going to either have to kill me or I'm going to kill him. One of the two is going to come out dead. That's the thought. That's the kind of person that I was. So she had to allow God to do, you know, that renovation in my life to, to humble me. You know, it took a long time. You know, all the things that I did, I did because I, I thought they were the right things. You know, I mean, she slept in the bedroom. I slept on the couch. You know, I thought, you know what, I'm going to let my wife sleep in there with the two kids, what have you. You know, all the things that we were doing were all wrong. You know, but little by little, little by little, it was a hard road. Let me tell you, if I got a dollar for every time I said I quit, man, I would be a millionaire. But I didn't quit. I just couldn't stop. I couldn't. I kept reaching out. I said, man, what is a 38-year-old man? No high school diploma. Broke, busted, disgusted at that time. Suicidal. You know, uh, what, 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 what's out there for him? But I can always see a little light at the end of the tunnel. There was something, a little light that I could see so far away that I can say, I know that there's still hope. I've got four kids, I've got a wife, I've lost everything because of drug addiction, because of all the things that I did. You know, and I lost my home, I lost my vehicle, I lost everything, everything. I gave it all up. I gave it up and I had nothing. I just had me, my clothes on my back. You know, and I said, man, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna do this, Lord? I need your help, I need your help. I need your help, and I just kept coming to service and coming before the Lord and asking the Lord to help me. You know, I wasn't a quitter. I wasn't going to stop working. I knew how to work. You know, so I said, you know what? I remember borrowing some money from my mother, you know, to get my first car. She co-signed. I couldn't even get a $150 credit card. So she co-signed for this little truck that I that I got. And I said, man, I'm just going to go back to do, to do the things I like to do. You know, I am a salesman by nature. I know how to sell things. I know how to work, you know. And I just went back and I was knocking on doors. You know, I was looking for palm trees because that's what I did. That's what my parents taught us to do. You know, I would get a finder's fee. And I said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you your share. Just help me. And I would go and I would find the trees. And then I would go out and I would dig them up with my little truck. I remember I would back up. I would back up to people's uh, uh, curb because I, I didn't have a crane. I would borrow my mom's dolly and I would somehow hoist them up on my truck and I would take them to my house, the house that my cousin allowed us to live in the living room. That's how low we got. I, was, I would borrow my cousin's living room for me, my wife, and my children. And then I, I remember asking my mom, you know, mom, can I, can I have a box? You know, I don't have the money for a box. Can I have a little soil, you know, to put in this? And, you know, and during those times, you know, a lot of things were going on. And I remember, you know, I, I was to the point I was frustrated. I said, I can't do this, you know. And I remember I walked from my house all the way to Pastor Albert's in Orange. And it was about a five-mile walk because I was just frustrated. I didn't know what to do. I said, man, I wanted to give up, you know, but I knew I couldn't. But I remember walking, and I got to Pastor Albert's house around just about dusk. You know, and I didn't know what he was doing. You know, I knocked on his door and he seen me. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. I thank you so much. You opened the door when I needed you the most. I remember you came down. You were probably having dinner with your family, but you didn't give up on me. I thank you for that. I really appreciate that. You know, I needed somebody to talk to. And Pastor Albert opened his door for me. He spent about an hour and a half with me, you know, and then gave me a ride home. You know, I remember him giving me a ride home. He pulled into my driveway, and I remember the words that I said. God gave me a vision right there. And I remember telling you, and I, I remember the words. I'll never forget it. I pulled in that driveway, you know, go. I said, Pastor, my sister lived next door to the house that I was staying in. I said, Pastor, God gave me a vision. He said that this house and that house is going to be filled with trees. I'm going to have my own nursery. And I remember you looked at me and you said, people buy trees? I remember that. And that's what he said. I can't forget it. He said that. I go, yeah, God, I've seen it loaded. And you know what? God had given me a vision. He gave me a vision of what God was going to give me, a business. A business before long I had my house and my sister's house packed with trees people were giving me all these trees what happened is I lived on this corner house behind me was my parents house and people were knocking on the door thinking that this was the office to the business so they would say hey you know what I got five ten palm trees do you want them they're for free and I'm going oh my god I can pick the best trees and just let go of the ones I don't want. So I was picking all the good trees and I was just digging them out. Before you know it, I got myself another little truck. You know, somebody loaned me $3,500. I got a truck and it had a lift gate on it. And I was big, man, and here comes my little business going. And then I got my first $20,000 sale. 
$20,000 sale. I remember it perfectly. I was so excited, and it was right around the corner from my house. I go, how did nobody see it? Because everybody knocks on doors, and this guy was loaded with some beautiful, beautiful cycad trees that are very valuable. So I bought them. He sold them to me real cheap. I resold them, and then I was able to save money enough to get a crane, my own little lift truck. Before you know it, we had our own business going, and our business grew to to make $50,000 on good months, a month. Our low month, I was making $25,000. Could you believe that? Imagine if I would have thrown in the towel. Imagine if I would have said, you know what, or she would have thrown in the towel. You gotta go way back, folks. That's the miracle of God. A 38-year-old man, no high school diploma, four kids and a wife, destituted, borrowing. Now God gives everything I can ever be on what I can ever imagine into my hands but he knew before the foundations of the world you know the decisions that we would make you know so we just didn't give up and didn't give up and, and you know it's been a battle you know but i had to learn to be a good husband a good husband i owe my wife my life now she's become my best friend i i live for her i live for her i'm planning you know i tell her man you know i'm 50 i'm going on 55 years old this this year 55 man i'm going wow you know, life went like this, 55. You know, and I said, honey, I got about another 15 more solid years of working. I don't have a 401k. I didn't put anything away. Everything God gave me, I gave it back to God. I gave it. I gave it all to God. I didn't put it all away. I didn't put anything away. You know, I mean, yeah, we got our home. But what I'm trying to say is that I was telling my wife, I go, I got about 15 more years of hard work in me. You know, I know I do. I know I do. I'm not going to retire until I'm 70 years old. But I told my wife that I'm going to take care of her and take care of my kids as long as I live. Praise God. I owe her my life. I owe her. And, and you know, folks, just don't give up. If he can save a man like me and mold me and shape me to something of, that I am today, I still mold me and shape me, you know. But every day, you know, I mean, we. I used to be violent. I would say just hurtful things. Now I don't do that anymore. I got the Holy Spirit inside me that before I even think of a wrong thought, man, the Holy Spirit corrects me. I'm tender to my wife. You know, I try to help her at home. I try to do everything for her, man. If you're not loving your wife that way, you're not loving her at all because it's cheap just to say, I love you, honey. But if you don't massage your feet, if you don't give her a back rub, if you don't wash the dishes like I do when she's gone, I clean my house, I clean my kitchen. There's nothing I don't do for my wife. She's never had to have a job that she has to bring in, although I wouldn't trade my job for her job because she, hers doesn't pay anything. You know what I'm saying? She used to, man, she's taking care of my kids. She's grown up my kids. Now she takes care of my grandkids. You know, she's an awesome woman, awesome woman of God that I love so Dearly, and she's my best friend. I'll tell you, my best friend. And I tell you, man, I hope really, I hope that I die first. Because I, if I lost my wife, I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do without my wife. I love her so much. She's the love of my life. And I promise you, I'm going to work. I'll probably work till I'm 80 just to support my wife. That's okay. Praise God. I will always apply. Amen. I'm going to work because I owe her my life. I owe my life. She's my darling. She's my best friend. She's my lover. She's everything to me. She's everything to me. I'm telling you, that's the work of God. That's the work of God inside me. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, um, also, you know, I was just thinking when he was talking and mentioning all these things, you know, it was just, oh God, that, you know, he transformed and changed everything, you know, in our now I can see the fruit of everything that, you know, if I would have gave up and not and lose hope, um, I would you know, I would see my, you know, my husband transform. And then, yeah, there was tough times, but you know what? Even though <coughs> to that time that I was in the hard times of my life, my walk with the Lord, I never gave up. And I, um, and I know there was times that, you know, even people thought we had it all together. It was so strange that, man, that's like a perfect marriage. But if they only knew, if they would just come into the house, but we were playing the role of a wife and a husband. That was a role. Mm -hmm. Like, we did it really good, that people didn't realize. Good actors. Yeah, we didn't even know it wasn't us. We should have watched Hollywood. <laughs> it was like, wow, even the, um, my mother-in-law, she, she was always there for me, and she still is. 
Um, she would always take my side, not his side, but always my side. Um, and But she knew a little bit of what's going on, but there was times that she would come to my house and say, Maria, tell me, what did Nanny do to you? And I'm like, she was just like, what? And they go, no, everything's fine. I lied. I said, everything's good because I knew God was working. God was working and all this. And then, um, and she would say to me, she would say, you know what, if something ever happens, if you guys end up um, separating or something, I, I want you to know that he will have to leave the house and you will have to stay here. Because that's how much I know my son and I know you. Because, you know, I thank the Lord also because, you know, even when we were going through all that, things, you know what, I don't know, I'm going to talk to you guys straight out. You know, I don't know where you guys are at in your marriage and as a mom. I never, never said one negative thing to my husband. Um, I, actually, my kids about my husband, never, never. I never say, you know, your dad is this, your dad this to me, your dad is doing this all to me. You know why? Because I never wanted my kids to look at his dad like, you know, even though he was, they probably knew they had an idea, but I didn't want that to come from me. I yeah. wanted them to know that mom, no matter what, stuck it out. Mom was there for them. and and. And they saw the change, they saw what God did in his life. And now look at it, I can not say that they, they've they never heard a um, negative word from me. Say, you know what, your dad is did this, your dad is drunk, your dad is going here, you got, never. I just played the role like, everything's fine. You know, I would tell my kids, you know what, just leave your dad alone, let's go, let's go. We're going to Chuck E. Cheese, that was our getaway. Chuck E. Cheese, every weekend. <laughs> Every weekend we'll go. So now when I take my grandbabies, I'm, I look back and like, oh man, you know. But now it's good. I have memories that I'm created with my grandbabies. Not anymore running away, running with my kids to Chuck E. Cheese. Now it's a good thing, you know. And we just, you know, and I just thank God for everything that, you know, God's doing in our lives. And he's still working in us. You know, we're not perfect. No one's perfect. But, you know, tonight, you know. We're just gonna make it, you know, tonight we're just gonna make it out, you know, the altar call. Tonight, I don't know for all the couples, all the marriages, you know, I don't know if have you ever thought of giving up. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if your marriage, you know, you're struggling. You know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna leave these altars open and we would love my husband and I to pray for you guys and that, you know, whatever you're, um, you're facing tonight, whatever you're, you know, struggling.